watched an anime character and thought, well, he's just like me at some point of my life. Today, we are looking into Haku's most relatable characters, Shuki Shimoke, a resident French fries because, you know, he's tall, yellow, and salty. In a world of anime filled with overpowered skills and larger-than-life personalities, it's sometimes the characters with grounded, real-world perspective that resonates the most. Enter Shuki Shimoke with his headphones on, his signature smirk, and a skeptical worldview of volleyball. To many, it might seem like he's just another side character. But for those who felt the weight of mediocrity, the fear of trying too hard, or the safety of remaining detached, Tsukishima stands out. He's not the prodigious ace or the passionate leader, but a beacon of realness in an anime brimming with fiery determination. And it's this relatability with every man journey from seeing a volleyball as just another club activity to discovering the heart-thumping excitement of true competition that sets him apart. Hi guys, it's Yume. Today, we're delving into not just a character analysis, but a reflection of those moments in our lives when we've held back, unsure of taking that passionate leap. So let's unwrap the brilliance of Shukishima's character arc. Shukishima's introduction in Haki was like, let's be honest, not one that instantly scores fan favorite. He seems aloof, dismissive, often overshadowed by the boisterous personalities of Hinata, the coolness of Kageyama, and the other more prominent characters. Yet, it's this very demeanor that sets the stage for one of the most human character arcs in a series. In a world where every character is born seemingly with this innate burning passion for the game, Tsukishima stands out as the outlier. For him, volleyball is just another club activity, a pastime. Not a dream, not an ambition, just something to do. I mean, he's tall, so it makes sense for him to pursue something, choose an activity that being tall is an advantage. And since you need to sign up for a club activity anyway, it just makes sense. His approach to volleyball and perhaps life in general is characterized by a level of detachment. He's armed with intellect and analytical skills, but he lacks the fire of genuine effort. To him, going all out, especially for something as trivial as a club activity, seems almost foolish. He's the embodiment of every individual who ever hesitated to invest emotionally, fearing disappointment. And isn't this so relatable? Growing up, especially in my like high school years, I could relate very much to him. How many times have we in our lives engaged in activity without committing it emotionally? Whether it's due to the fear of failure, a way to protect our own egos, or simply a mechanism to fit in, We've all been there. We've all been Shukishima at some point, keeping a distance from the fiery passion. Let's get too close and get burnt. Yet, as the series unfold, we witness the subtle and beautiful changes in his outlook. His initial detachment and sarcastic comments slowly but surely give way to genuine interest. But what causes this shift? Tsukishima's evolution is not just a testament to good character development, but a mirror to our own journeys. We've had moments where we've questioned the why behind our actions. Watching Tsukishima grapple with these questions and slowly come into his own is a reminder that it's okay not to have everything figured out. Passion isn't always an innate fiery force that consumes you from day one. Sometimes it's a slow burn built over time and experience and introspection. And when it finally ignites, the result is nothing short of spectacular. So what are his triggers for change? Every metamorphosis has its catalyst, and Tsukishima's evolution is no exception. There are few but 
pivotal moments that give us glimpses into the cracks forming in his initial dismissive attitude towards the game. Firstly, it's witnessing Yamaguchi's dedication. Tsukishima's best friend, Yamaguchi, has a different fire in him. He might start off as a bench player, not very good, but his desire to improve, especially with his float surf, doesn't go unnoticed. Yamaguchi's unyielding determination acts as a contrast to Tsukishima's indifference. It's an unspoken challenge, right? If Yamaguchi, who started in a similar or even less prominent situation and is arguably less talented than Tsukishima, can put this much effort, then what's stopping Tsukishima? And secondly, perhaps one of the most important yet subtle step to his change was during the summer training camp during the joint training between the few schools like Nekoma High and Kurodani. Tsukishima was roped into practicing sessions with Bokuto and Kuro at night after the official practice hours. And at first, he was baffled, rightfully so. It's understandable, right? They have been running and practicing for the whole day. Imagine how tired everyone was. And he said to himself, it's just a club activity. You know that. Why are you putting in that much effort? All that hard work will only make you suffer later. But during one of their conversations, Bogodo asked him, Do you even enjoy playing volleyball? Volleyball, nice. To which Tsukishima answered honestly, yeah, But Bogodo replied, Isn't that because you suck at it? <laughs> Here, Bogodo revealed how he only really starts to love volleyball when his spikes are working well in actual matches. It is the moment when you defeat an opponent that one moment will get you hooked on volleyball. And to experience that moment, you need to be good, really good. And to get good, you have to practice. Then, during the match against Shiro Torizawa, we perhaps saw one of the most defining moments in Tsukishima's journey of embracing passion, when he managed to block Ushijima, one of the most powerful spikers in the region. The joy and satisfaction evident in his face is unparalleled. The adrenaline, the rush of the crowd, the feeling of being invincible, even just for a moment, it becomes a tangible representation of what Bogoto was talking about. Volleyball in that instance wasn't just another club activity, it was everything. In that split second, the entire gymnasium, the roaring crowd, the entire match fades into the background. It's just Tsukishima and his triumph. Tsukishima learns that talent alone isn't what set players apart. It's the combination of skill, dedication, and the insatiable hunger to improve. And this understanding manifests during Karasuno's critical matches, where Tsukishima not only taps into his analytical prowess, but also pushes his physical limits. His blocks, spikes, and feints are no longer just that. They become expression of his efforts. And in these efforts, he discovers the joy he had never known, the satisfaction of a well-executed block, or the thrill of an outwitting opponent becomes addictive. He realizes that there is an inherent happiness in striving, in challenging oneself, and in pushing boundaries. Through this trigger, Tsukishima's journey becomes a universal story of growth. It's about breaking self-imposed barriers, embracing the unexpected, and understanding that sometimes letting go of restraints and diving headfirst into your passions can be the most liberating feeling in the world. Now, 
Let's backtrack a little bit. Remember when Shukushima mused to himself why are putting that much effort, all that hard work will only make you suffer later? At the heart of Tsukishima's early ambivalence towards volleyballs lies a deeply personal story, one that involves his older brother, Akitaru. As a child, Tsukishima idolized Akitaru, who was supposedly the ace of Karasuno. However, this admiration shatters when Tsukishima discovers the painful truth. Akitaru was never the star player he claimed to be. In fact, he was never gotten off the bench during his time in Karasuno. The realization that his brothers lied to him about his achievements, combined with the understanding of Akitaru's deep-seated regrets over his unfulfilled volleyball dreams, leaves a lasting impact on Shikishima. This revelation instills in him a fear of disappointment and disillusionment about the game. If his brother couldn't make it, what chance does he have? Why even try if the potential failure is so great? But as the narrative progresses, it becomes clear that Agitaro's story serves as a both cautionary tale and a source of motivations. Tsukishima learns that the pain of living with regrets, the real tragedy isn't failing despite giving your all, it's never in truly trying and that living with the what ifs, realizing that his brother's deepest regrets comes not really from the failing but from not trying hard enough. Now, last but not least, one of the key aspects of Tsukushima's change is being part of a team like Karasuno, where he is constantly surrounded by unyielding determinism and infectious enthusiasm. Perhaps if he stays in some unknown school, random school with like lukewarm players, Tsukushima will never discover his drive and passion. But in this case, the environment helped him. The very essence of Karasuno to soar and conquer the skies begins to sip into him. The reliable strength of Nishinoya, the solid, stable rock that is Sawamura, the quiet perseverance of Yamaguchi, the fierce dedication of Hinata, the stoic determination of Kageyama, and many others. It's not their success that influenced him, it's their unwavering effort, it's their ability to give everything for a spike, a save, or a serve even when faced with an overwhelming odds. Haikyuu through the lens of high school volleyball has always been more than just about winning matches. It's a masterclass of life's fundamental truths, with Tsukushima's journey serving as a profound testament. The beauty of his character's arc lies not just in its relevance to sports enthusiasts, but in its universal resonance. It's an echo of a sentiment we've all felt at different moments of our lives, the transformative power of genuine effort. When we look beyond the confines of a volleyball court, Shukishima's reluctance to invest himself fully mirrors the sentiment many of us grapple with. In a world saturated with stories of prodigious talents, overnight successes, and seemingly unattainable standards, it's all too easy to ask, why bother? Why pour our heart and soul into a pursuit when there's a risk of failure or when there are others who might just naturally be better? But as Tsukishima's journey unravels, Hakyu offers a compelling counter-narrative. It posits that the real magic isn't necessarily in achieving an extreme goal. It's in the transformative journey that genuine effort sparks within us. Take any endeavor in life, be it learning musical instruments, embarking a new career, writing a book, making a YouTube video, or cultivating relationships. The beginning is often marked by hesitation, doubts, and comparisons. We might be daunted by the virtuosos, the industrial leaders, the seemingly perfect couples around us. But the moment we shift focus from those outcomes to the process, a profound change begins. 
genuine effort transcends the technicalities of the task at hand. It's a commitment to growth and a celebration to the small victories along the way. Tsukishima's metamorphosis serves as a poignant reminder that the joy of genuine effort is intrinsically rewarding. When we truly invest ourselves, we don't just improve in our chosen pursuits, we evolve as individuals. We cultivate resilience, we foster new growth mindset, and most importantly, discover facets that we ourselves never knew existed. And sometimes it might just surprise you how strong and tough you can be. In essence, Haku, through Tsukishima's art, offers not just a sports lesson, but a life lesson. It encourages us to reveal in the journey, but to find joy in the grind, and to understand that the path paved with genuine effort is always worth walking. So thank you so much guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I really really love Haku and Tsukishima's art. I will do more Haku videos so if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel and thank you and see you next time. Bye bye!